Ecology and Environment. It is clear that the new scientific world paradigm will include a larger concern for ecology and the environment. When we see television specials that demonstrate that 75 to 100 years of mining in Colorado, for example, have altered and polluted the groundwater, and that corrections for this pollution will have to be made as long as there is human life on this earth. Or when we look at the crack babies and AIDS babies and also realize that our use of addictive agents such as nicotine, alcohol, prescription drugs, coffee, and probably other substances is altering the gene pool and slowly decreasing the mental and physical potential of generations to come in what are considered normal people, we have cause for concern. Or, as Brian Swim has stated, those cathedrals are nothing compared to the elegance of the DNA. In terms of architectural power and beauty, the cathedrals are tin shacks in comparison, and yet will allow the DNA to be smashed, beat up, ruined. Our denial about the role of addiction in destroying our gene pool and the support of that destruction by addiction of that DNA needs to be of, the, of concern to us all. We need to see that the internal and the external environment are all one, and that both are polluted and are affecting all of creation and the creation process itself. When we remove ourselves from full participation in the environment and we fail to see that what we do affects all of creation, we destroy creation. Native people are acutely aware of their relationship with the environment. It is more than just a group of humans trying to save the environment. Native people know that we have to recognize that Grandmother Earth and Grandfather Sky, as well as Wakan Tonka, God, Creator, or Ultimate Process, are not separate from us, and that a working relationship with all three is both necessary for survival on this planet and one of the gifts of being human. Concern for the environment must be embedded in a larger change of consciousness. Swim says, anything less than a fundamental transformation of our situation is hardly worth talking about. David Griffin states clearly how we have arrived at a non-ecological view of the universe. The bias toward the laboratory experiment in the philosophy of science has philosophically reflected the materialistic, non-ecological assumption that things are essentially independent of their environments, so that the scientist abstracts from nothing essential in, say, removing cells from the human body or animals from a jungle to study them in a laboratory. It reflects the reductionist assumption that all complex things are really no more self-determining than the elementary parts in isolation, so that they should be subject to the same kind of strong laboratory repeatability. We have developed a world order that systematically fails and refuses to see the whole, and that the survival of the whole will be absolutely essential to the survival of the individual. Imagine, for example, decisions about building, mining, or number of plane flights being considered not on the basis of economics, but on the basis of the needs of the environment, and that each company saw the needs of the environment overriding the needs of the company. Imagine if every conference of every group held anywhere in the world started each session the way the Conference of the American Indian Science and Engineering Society does, with someone asking that, in all our deliberations, we considered and were in keeping with the needs of Grandmother Earth and Grandfather Sky. Imagine what each of our lives would be like if we were aware of the sacredness of our internal and external environments, and we were not willing to put anything in either that we would not offer to who or whatever our concept is of God. 
One clear voice that sounds the need for a postmodernist ecology is that of John B. Cobb Jr. He says, once we are forced to attend to the destructive consequences of our exploitation of our environment, the facts are indisputable. Because the destruction has been vastly accelerated by the individual revolution, we ask ourselves why in recent times we have been so oblivious. The answer is that we see what our worldview encourages us to, encourages us to see. Cobb discusses the need for an ecological worldview as absolutely essential in our world today. I could not agree more. It is not just that we need to be concerned with ecology and the environment. We need to start with a worldview that is based upon a very complex participation with the environment. Ironically, again, when we fully participate in our own lives and are aware of our participation with our environment and all life, we interchange with our worlds, and both we and our worlds are changed. In my time with the Australian Aboriginals, I was told that they had lived so completely with their environment for 40,000 years that they left almost no trace of their being there. Of all native peoples, they have had least impact on their environment and forced themselves on it least, respecting all of nature more than any other group of people on this planet. We have much to learn from them as we do from most Native people, when it comes to living with our environment. It can be seen, therefore, that a new paradigm is, by necessity, based upon cooperation. This is not a cooperation that comes out of a mental decision to cooperate. It is a co cooperation that comes out of the process of respecting ourselves and our process, which then leads to our respect of other people, the environment, and all of creation. It is difficult for mechanistically trained minds to understand that respecting ourselves, taking care of ourselves, and listening to ourselves and our own process does not lead to self-centeredness. Ironically, the work I am doing has shown that just the opposite is true. When people are self-centered, in their addictions, they are indeed out of touch with themselves and others. It is only as recovering people begin to respect themselves that they really begin to be aware of their connection with all things and, interestingly enough, with their God. John Cobb puts it well. The ecological worldview tells us that our initial mistake was the supposition that we could isolate some elements from the whole and learn the truth about them in this abstraction. We are only a part of a whole. The choice to participate in that whole is ours. One of the basic characteristics of addiction is isolation. Isolation from ourselves, from others, from the environment, and from our spirituality. Recovery and the new paradigm offer the possibility of the breakdown of this isolation. It is when we participate with respect for ourselves and our environment that we truly begin to know the meaning of the new paradigm.